Welcome back, gamers, to another episode of Rulebook RX. I'm Didi, and today we're going to be talking about the new Stardew Valley board game. Uh, Stardew Valley, for those of you that don't know, is a it started out as a digital game. Uh, it's on the Switch. It's on pretty much every platform. I'm sure you can even find it on mobile for most cases. Um, but it's you kind of have a nice leisurely experience in that game. You kind of raise your little house house and uh you know anything that you know can help build your your little experience you you just kind of do that in the game uh so when i was at gen con this year and i found this i thought this might be a really nice experience for me and my family my daughter really tends to like the video game of stardew valley so i was like you know maybe this is the game uh that that will hit the table and we can all as a family kind of cooperatively work on this together so what I'm going to be looking at, what we're going to be mainly reviewing, is not the board game itself, but the rulebook, uh, and maybe some user experience, uh, things that they may have incorporated with the board, with the with the rulebook itself, uh, and see what they're doing right. Uh, this game is put out through Pandasaurus, I believe, at least that's the booth that I bought it through, and they said that they're the only, the only ones uh, setting out the game. And the rulebook itself, nice quality. You know, maybe not as like linen finished as uh, some of the other ones. But what I'm going to do is we're going to go to another table here. I'm going to look at the rule book in depth, and then we're going to talk more about it right back here in just a little bit. All right, here we go. So here's kind of the different things that I wanted to discuss uh, with UI, UX, uh, user interface, user uh, experience, and you know the rule books here that that came with the game. So right here, one of the things that they kind of threw in, it's just on like a you know easy glossy one piece of paper, uh, strategy and tips. So it's kind of like doing things. You know, this gives you a little bit of a rundown. I don't know if they put this in after the fact, um, if they had some complaints about the regular rule book. But it just goes into you know some some tips to make the game easier. This game is it's is pretty hard. Um, it, there's a lot going on with it, uh, and you really got to stick with it if you're if you're going to be able to beat it. So there's there are some different things that you can do to mitigate some of this uh, some of the hardness. But you know just kind of giving you that that I had a, a difficult time. Uh, it was pretty daunting um, to to open it up and. and kind of put everything away first of all there are some you know as you can kind of see in here there are some really nice uh, trays that come with the game that help store things which is nice um but you know opening up opening everything up and, and punching it out was like oh my goodness what is this a lacerta game so am i playing feast for odin here mr rosenberg so uh there there that's there's that just kind of opening it up kind of feeling overwhelmed uh, i got this woof oops, sorry about that got this one at gen con uh and it was uh just kind of one of those impulse buys. I, I thought it would be good for my family, but that is uh, probably not going to be the case. So here we have uh, this player board, which I want to draw your attention to this because this was kind of frustrating to me. Like right on here, like I'm just going to pick on the, the fishing one here. This profession makes it easier to catch fish and allows you to gain other rewards while fishing. This is never explained. Um, there are some other uh, profession, like profession cards you get along the way. But when you would get this as a new player, you're going to be looking at being like, well, what do I get? What do I get to do? You know, how does this how does this help me? So it's not until you start getting the professional upgrades that maybe that starts, you know, this profession starts helping you. I found this like I kind of wish this would have said, you know, profession professional upgrades make it easier to to go fishing because right off the bat. I was confused, and I flipped through the page, this rule book several times to, to try and figure that part out, and that just was never quite clear to me. Uh, I have the board here. I'm going to reference it in a little bit. Sorry if the background's a little busy as we talk about this for now, uh, but there are some things that while we go through here, I want to just kind of reference to to say that you know it would have been nicer to have uh, a little bit of explanation. So. Uh, you know, here we got this nice, you know, here's a, welcome to Stardew Valley. Here's what you got to, you know, here's what you have to do to, to try and win the game, uh, which are up at the top here. So that's always kind of nice, you know, as a UI UX trick to, to put it at the top and be like, okay, here's what you are going for. Um, you know, we have our listed components. We have all of these components kind of listed here. One thing that was weird is my bag was black and not blue. So that was a little interesting to see that this was blue in here. But my final version was black. Same thing here. They have a fishing bag, all in blue. Um, so that was 
you know, I kept kind of like wondering if I had a different bag, if, you know, any of that kind of stuff. But one thing I like here is right at the very end is the starting goal, like really easy to notice, like, okay, this is what everyone starts with. So when you do set up the game, uh, that's kind of nice. While you're setting it up, they do have these around the board. Like, I don't know if you can notice, you know, you've got your little mushroom here. Uh, and then the only time you can get forgeables. Sorry about the moving everything around here. Can I even do this? Oh man, I'm just shaking everything around here. All right. You see those little uh, trees down there? That's where some of these forgeable goes. Now, the thing that I found as a user, there's only a couple of those spots and they're all down here. So if you're not really good at fishing uh, and that's all dice, you're going to be kind of out of luck for getting some of these, uh, some of these forgeables that have pretty decent effects. So you almost got to go out of your way just to forage things, which I found not super fun, uh, especially when everything is kind of a time set. Uh, of, of how you need to do. So here we have the how to start setting everything out uh, You know in a nice graphic representation. They did a really great job with All the, the visual representation to try and at least make things a little easier for you learning the games Here we go into a nice lengthy int introduction of you know the goals and the different room types of it and how you unlock those and all these different community center bundles in detail once again, this is really great you know, it's nice to have this. This means number of players. So here's where things start to get, go a little off the rails. Um, we have this season phase and it, you're going to be flipping over a card and they have these different icons and they kind of go into detail here. That's about all we get for an explanation of these. Um, now, I had a really hard time with this and this is what I want to show you here. The green crow and the red crow. I did not see these on the board, um, and nor is there anywhere on the rule book that says, "Look on the, you know, look on the board," and it shows you the the red and green types. So that was easily missed for me, um, and I don't know. It, it was probably my last playthrough because I was like, I don't get what those mean when they came up, because uh, I missed this section. So it would have been nice, like, you know to have a little bit of like, hey, look right here. Because it, it just, I missed it. I don't know how, but I just did. So um, this is it though for any of these, any of these explanations. So if you had any kind of question on that, you would have to go to someplace else. Um, here they go into the action phases and, and how you do the forgeables, kind of as I mentioned, you know, at least they show, you know, what those look like and then what happens when you draw, you know, these weird looking tiles and stuff like that. Um, these action sections are fine. Um, they kind of go into, you know, here's the watering crops thing, you know, collecting different, uh, animal byproducts from the animals, buying animals. Um, yeah, planting in, in, in all of this, it, all of that makes sense. There was, uh, you know, the geode thing is is kind of interesting in a way because you you get the geo and then you get to find out what type you've got. So you know that's all fully explained. Uh, the fishing is really big and robust and and you know it goes into a lot of detail. It was really hard for me uh, to to, do, to get any kind of good fish. Maybe that's just the dice to hate me, uh, but. I had to kind of keep referencing this every time to make sure I was doing it right. Uh, you know, once again, this is just kind of like showing you what your starting tools do. I didn't really find, you know, maybe maybe I'd, it's just me, but I do wish that there was kind of a, a way to start things a little easier. Like the, the starting uh, the starting items that you get don't really do anything for you, so. I don't almost I almost don't know why you start with one and why you wouldn't just be able to buy one down the line. Um, so resource cards, you know, you can adjust the game difficulty. Solo rules were, you know, that's about it. It's just kind of you're playing it on your own and you get to draw, you know, a couple cards instead of one. Uh, and then here's the back of the rule book where. I don't think this is super helpful. Like, I love it when they put these, they use the back page here to, to fill some of these out, but like this right here, like this isn't that helpful. Like, 
yeah, like if you if you need to know what you what they do, I mean, at least they give you the page number. So maybe I'm being a bit too critical of it. Maybe it's uh, you know, I I just had a very difficult time uh, with the rule book for this. So a couple UI UX tricks to help you. It's just I wish they would have kind of explained more of of what each of these did a, a little more. Um, some of the explanations that I found in here were were kind of hard to to navigate. So. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. Let's go back and I'm going to tell you even more what I think. So there we have it. That is uh, Stardew Valley and uh, the rule book there. So as I kind of mentioned earlier, you know, I bought this game as more of a, you know, of a family game and it is a an intense one. Uh, as we kind of looked at with the rule book, there's a lot of stuff going on. So buyer beware uh, when you're when you're picking this game up because as a user experience I wanted more of like a just kind of a leisurely experience you know maybe doing this that and the other thing and it's you, you know you really got to be moving around the board and kind of know what you're what you're doing um, there's some there's some things I wish that would have expounded you know upon in the rule book a little more um, you know for instance these player age you know the, these guys here uh, your your player boards you know, it says this profession makes it easier to fish. I didn't really find any of that, like, and I didn't know where to look even in the book uh, to find out more about how it does that. So um, there's there's just some things with it that it's it's too heavy of a game for our user experience, for my family, uh, just kind of knowing that going in. You know we're we're probably going to be passing on this game uh, to a hopefully another forever home. Uh, there's if you are looking for something more of a heavier experience, this is definitely probably a, a good cooperative game for you because there's a lot of stuff to be juggling, um, which I mean I think translates well from the video game to this board game. But you know uh, I. Uh, it just was a little bit too much for us at this time. They do a really nice thing with the board itself where, you know, a lot of the things are labeled really well. Um, you know, I, I mentioned, I believe, in the uh, rulebook part about uh, the crows. And the, there's there's a couple different spots, like, on the rule or on the board here itself that, you know, it, it shows, oh, it's got a red crow and a green crow. I did not realize that. The first game so anytime those came up I was just like I don't know um, I did find in the rulebook later you know where it mentions where what, what you have to do with that but um, I don't I don't know if I think the rulebook itself is fine um, there's not many things I would do to help it um, you know I really like that they have the objectives really you know labeled really clearly they have a nice thing in the back that shows pretty much what every symbol in the game means so there's I think the rulebook does a really great job of, of trying to teach a very complex game with a lot of iconography, um, which which makes for a nice user experience. And then paired with pairing that with, um, you know, what's on the board, I think it's easy to to kind of figure out what you're going to be doing. But you know, just as a game overall, the uh, the, the other thing that I really liked with the rulebook itself was, you know, when they take away all the different stuff from the board, and uh, just show you what these different areas are you know without all the you know the clutter around it's a nice feature so um i think yeah there's there's not much i can do to recommend for the the rule book itself but uh you know as a game it it was a bit too much for us uh i mean i do like some crunchy games but I, those don't hit the table as much as, as I would like them to. So uh, that's what I got for this episode. Uh, once again, I'm Dee Dee, and this is the Rulebook RX. We're going to be talking about more games and rulebooks and the user experience of those games. So uh, for now, signing off. Have yourself a great rest of your day. GoPro stop recording.